Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Welcome back to Wrong to Strong. Yeah, I had a phone call yesterday from one of my good friends that actually had just got out from the feds doing 15, got out. He caught another case for 20. He's gonna be going away for a while. You know, cartel and gangs in Chicago, the whole drug trafficking thing in Chicago is at an all time high right now. You know, wholesale prices, supply, transportation, distribution, use, money laundering, which is all happening in Chicago today is at the highest level ever been. Let's get into this video. Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JC. I am Wrong Strong. Hey, if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, mi pandilla, Chicago, you already know, man. Gas it up, jump in the Suburban, let's take a ride. It's always been out there, man, it ain't nothing new. You know, Chicago has a long history of organized crime. The problem today is the same, but at a very high level. With the steady, steady supply of, you know, drugs from the Mexican cartels, and I mean all of them, not just one. They all have a very, very high presence in Chicago, from Sinaloa to Mencho to the Betrán Leva, Golf Cartel, the new set. Everybody has a piece of the action in Chicago because it is such a big hub to distribute and make money. The street gangs, where do they come into play? Well, the street gangs serve as a primary distributor on the streets. They're the boots on the streets. They move around, they talk to people. You know, it, it increases the power for both parties, gangs and the cartel, because money is power. But what's crazy is, it's like now, the purity of the drugs is only like 30%, but it's sold at 110% markup. In my time, it was the other way around. It was pure, you know what I mean? And we sold it at a lower rate. I mean, back in my days, you would get a fish scale key if you had a connect connect anywhere from 15 to 17 and a half and you would turn around and sell it for 21, 22. That was the thing, now it's the other way around. You're pretty much buying garbage at a very high, high price. But it all comes down to demand and supply. It's backwards now. It's not supply and demand like it was. You know, the increase of drug bust and the increase of trying to supply is at the same time is causing like a, a little mini war, you know, with the government and the cartel. So it, it, it's creating a war, like a race. The Olympics, I call it the Olympics of making money. <laughs> and it doesn't help now that gang rules and social morals have pretty much disappeared. In-house discipline no longer exists. It doesn't even, it's not even talked about because nowadays if you were to discipline one of the members, he would probably come back and try to kill you. There is no loyalty, no, no respect. What's hurt Chicago the most, and I hate to say it like this, but it is the truth, has been the removal of key, key leaders due to incarceration mostly. The feds picking up these, you know, big leaders like Larry Hoover, Gino, all these big figures to incarceration has damaged more than help because believe it or not, these people actually had the respect of the younger guys and they followed rules, you know, how things had to be. But, you know, lack of communication now has played a big, big part in the Chicago violence. It's become less controlled, and nowadays, there is no approval for hits. In my days, you had to have an approval of the leaders in order to go hit somebody, go take care of business. There's no questions asked, and most of these beefs are actually personal. They're not even gang-related or gang business. 
Most murders in Chicago take place in, in outdoor and public spaces. So a lot of people that have nothing to do with what's going on are put at risk. It's higher on summer days, holidays, anniversaries, wakes, even funerals, man. You know, it's been on the news, you guys have seen it, where gang members will go to the funeral and, and light the whole place up. It's, it's, it's out of control. And yes, Chicago always has been pretty, you know, out of control, but they were rules. There was control back in the day. There was some type of control because of the leaders being in their place and having to follow the guidelines and the rules. I mean, what good it, what good was it for all these gangs to have, you know, constitutions, you know, uh, all these rules and, and stuff if, if none of them are, are being followed no more, you know, and a lot of these gang members are going crazy with their little groups, you know, groups of five, six, seven, all, you know, with guns. But what they don't understand is, is that most of them are landing in prison for murders. So they're living very, very short periods of time with the money and the power. Like I said, I hate to put it this way, but back in the days, yes, there was a lot of murders, a lot of, a lot of people would get shot and killed, but a lot of these high-powered gangsters would last 10 to 15 years on the streets before they eventually were get caught. Now the average lifespan of a high-powered member is between three to six years. That's fucking crazy. Now, my biggest goal in sharing these stories, these videos, is to show you that there is no Cinderella story and none of this, you know, this whole drug trade, this whole gang shit, this whole high power shit, this whole macho man, tough guy. There is no Cinderella story. There is no happy ending ever. The feds, the feds, the feds, the feds want to make big sweeps because as soon as they take 60 off the block, there's another 60 right behind you to take your place. The funeral homes are staying in business. The cemeteries are full of tough guys. And there is just no end to this. This is why if you really want to be a tough guy, if you really want to make a change, if you really, really love your city, love your block, then you would lead by example and actually try to make a change and stop the change somewhere. Somewhere it needs to be chopped off. These kids need to see that this is not the answer. This is not the way to live. This is not the way to die. This is not the way to make money. But someone has to step up. They say that one man can make a big difference. I believe, I believe so. I believe so because there's a lot of stories where one person has saved 20, 30 lives. I believe, I believe in that strongly. And this is why I put in the work every day, every day, every day. I sit down, I record, I get my message out there. I edit it, I, I do what I can. But I need your help to get this message out. I need you to share this video. I need you to tell people, it's what it is, man. We, we can't expect for the smell of shit to go away if we keep walking on it. You know what I'm saying, but I don't know shit, man. I'm just JC. I am wrong strong. You know, I spent 17 years of my life in and out of prison thinking I was a man, thinking I was the shit, and I wasn't nothing. I had no worth ethic in me. I had no morals. I had nothing. And now that I do, I actually feel like I'm alive, I'm happy, I don't watch over my shoulder, and I'm good. Life is good, and life can get better. It doesn't matter the amount of money that you have, it's what you do with what you have. That's what counts. Hey, don't judge nobody, stay in your lane, live savage, and remember, you only have one life to live, man. Live it out here, sober, not gangbang with your loved ones, create a family, create memories that one day you'll look back and smile.